Yeah, kid walks in here. He's like, uh, any chance you guys can, you know how to fix a massage <laughs> gun? But ge- it's so dead ass, so genuine. Yeah. I, I don't know what, why you think so highly of us. Well, yeah, I guess I put you guys in a high pedestal. I thought Mr. Workout over here would, Mr. Big Workout, he would know how to uh, <laughs> Mr. Fix Big it. Workout. Mr. Big Workout. I love how you getting in shape also means you're now an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't know. He's always been a bright guy. I figured that he'd be able to, you know, because now that, you I know. did change uh, your tire that one time. Yeah, yeah, we changed your tire together. Okay, so I, that I, you've put him on a pedestal <laughs> since then. Yeah, you just look at Aaron. This there's nothing. We this didn't guy. change a tire. You, fucking you didn't know tire. how to change a tire, so you had to bring it to me so I could change it. Yeah, but you didn't know how to change it either. I did because it was a special kind of tire. Because I, I you know changed. I ride good, boy. Yeah, you ride good. <laughs> um, no, I just I I can't find anything on Google about how to change this massage gun. So you think uh, we know more than Google again? I'm holding you on a higher pedestal, and I apologize for that, then. I would rather, like, if you came in and, like, had something wrong with your car, that would be more, I feel like. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a guy thing. I would still say no, no. Yeah, I don't no. Know. I'd be like, I'm go no to a mechanic, shot. you sick fuck, but. Yeah, what do I look like? Hmm. Go to. Again, th- th- but there's logic. Go to well, Geek Squad. I thought there was logic behind this, because you, you know, being fit and getting into working out and all this stuff, and Ruben just being a very, you know, intelligent, bright person that, that he is, and I figured maybe put two and two together, you know, work out and brains all into one, be able to, you know, help, you know, the situation that I have. What are you, like, making a team? That's usually how it goes, no? Yeah, this but... This whole thing's a team. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Soup Podcast. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron, the Nerd Soup Monkey, and Nash. Hello. And we are back to talk about the world of Hollywood movies, TVs, video games, TVs. <laughs> More TVs. Yeah, just multiple TVs. See you see those, those OLEDs? OLEDs? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're on sale, dude. I regret buying the OLED I did four years ago, but every that's time I go walk there. into Costco, they have them right there. I'm like, I'm gonna get you one day, dude. The like 65 inch OLED is very reasonable. Mm-hmm. 70, 80 inch OLED. So. Home theaters, man. Theaters are dying. But look at that. World of movies. We've got trailers to talk wow. about. We've got some key castings, uh, some controversial trailers, and of course, some fan questions. But you can listen to the podcast, of course, on YouTube. Uh, not iTunes. Apple Podcasts. Going to try and change that up. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and all the other platforms. And follow us on social media at Nerd Soup, Bo Soup, Nerd Soup Monkey, Anthony JQ Nash on all social media platforms. And also subscribe to our podcast channel. So, starting June 22nd, these podcasts will no longer be uploaded to this YouTube channel. It's going to be uploaded to our podcast channel. And the link is in the description down below. You two subscribed? Uh, no, I haven't yet. No. I'm going to wait like till like it first happens. Like, we're the store owners. You don't want to be the first one to mm. cut the, and then, you know, cut the, the rope and then go in. You know, you want to let the people in first. And then I'll follow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Know? And when the people start riding because there's no baby formula? I know you said not to go off topic here, but might as well just we you know. start. Yeah, go so. on. Okay. I, I want to ask that favor, um, again, that I did last time. That I'm not going to fix your massage gun. No, not that. I want to... Can everybody tweet at Teddy and tell him to get uh, to give me his N64? That's Could, funny. You just yeah. had a baby. Right, okay, he doesn't that need That gives it. it even more of a reason. I'm not. He doesn't have to drop it off to me. I'll go pick it up. You That's think he very needs nice that hassle? Baby's crying in the other room. Elena's giving the business now. He's getting it on Twitter. That's just not thoughtful. Well, you know what? When it rains, it pours. I'm excited to get him on, though, to talk about life as a dad. They seem to be very efficient. You know? They're like, oh, Elena's could give birth this week. It was that night. And like two days later, they were home. Him and Joe have been playing Mario Party nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, please tweet him and... Say, let Nash just have the N64 just for a couple weeks. That's all I need. Just a quick favor. Well, it's not going to be a couple weeks. That's going to sit in your house for years. When, That's I, what when I say a couple weeks, I will... Because when, when Teddy gets an back. urge to want to play and you have it, that's going to be... But the thing is a dust bunny right now. He's not touching it, and he's no, not yeah, going to sure. touch it now. But he has it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking from his perspective. That's why it's tough to get his greasy he, little paws he off He thinks of that I'm like this, like, low-life scumbag. Like, did you hear that story about the Yankee the Yankee prospect that got cut because he was stealing all the yeah, team yeah, equipment? Yeah, yeah. He thinks that I'm going to take this and sell off, like, the, the merchandise because the value of N64 games are high. No, I just want to play fucking Pokemon Stadium. I want to play all these other games you know it's, it's just simple things i love that teddy thinks you're so first of all you're poor second you're a scumbag yeah so you're gonna flip the n64 for you can like sell it for like 80 100 bucks you use n64 if it's functioning well 
but that's in his mind. That Aaron once put it perfectly that he projects onto us what he would do in our <laughs> shoes. I couldn't have said it any better myself. That is brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, well, you. just help me out, please, guys. But that's why please. Teddy's so bad at no, reading his friends. Give, give me that massage gun. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling a little confident in myself. <laughs> you give it back oh, to you. It's going to fucking electrocute you. Yeah. That's the only favor I asked for. All right. That's it. All right, guys. Let's get to the first story here. It's a big one. We've got a casting for the Emperor in Dune Part 2, Emperor Shaddam the Fourth. Obviously, a character that was mentioned, but he plays a big role in the books. Obviously, he's kind of the puppeteer in the shadows, pulling a lot of the strings. But now we're going to see him come behind the curtains, and it's going to be Christopher fucking Walken. Uh, and of course, a lot of people had fun with this because he's very memeable. He's had some, you know, he's got the very memorable voice that nearly everyone can impersonate. Uh, some better than others. <laughs> yeah, I would say that uh, you could try, but a lot of people do it horrendously. Yeah. But I think this is actually a good choice because he's obviously a, a very good actor, one of the best, and he can play that unhinged, paranoid, evil character, and I think that uh, he, he's got a good face for it. He looks like someone who would be an emperor in some sort of space empire. Uh, and also, you know, having Florence Pugh as his daughter, I think that's going to be a, a cool one-two punch. You also have Austin Butler joining the cast as uh, the Harkonnen nephew. That's going to be sort of a rival for Paul. So, yeah, some of these pieces are falling into place for part two. And I think that most people, most fans of the first one should be happy with this casting. Yeah, it's starting to stack out. Starting to get a nice all-star appearance with all these... Uh... Are you going through the outline? What? Are you going through the outline? No. Okay. You just checked out? No, I'm listening. Oh. Okay. Well, no, just the all-star lineup. The She-Hulk um, trailer. Okay, let me put the volume down. <laughs> yeah, it looks terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can't say much about the dialogue. <laughs> you know, just need, you know, just more worms with that, too. And this this film might be better than the first one, you know. Uh, You're going to get but, your worms. Uh, I, I want my worms. I can guarantee you that. I want my worms. So you said in the second book, right, that, that there's worms galore. If you felt there was a lack of worms in part one, you will not feel there's a lack of worms in My part two. My childhood dog had worms galore, and he died. Good so, thing you don't that. have any emotional attachments to animals. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I love Dixon. You sure that was his name? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dixon actually it is one of the very goats. Confident. <laughs> Dixon is one of the goats, but... <laughs> well, when I got a new dog, Aaron goes, oh, I bet you don't even remember the last dog anymore. <laughs> and he replaced like, it. like, what? <laughs> Oh, I want to get off topic so bad, but um, <laughs> no, it, it just uh, again with uh, you know a movie title and a, a movie franchise starting to make it, you know, starting to creep in and you know kick down the door of being one of the elites. Now bringing in, you know, Christopher Walken, Florence Pugh, and Austin Butler, uh, you know, some of the hottest. You know, one of the hottest actors, one of the hottest actresses, and then a, a legend. I mean, this is just going to build on how build up the hype of how good this movie is going to be. Yeah, I think it's like the. It's funny because I don't think I would have ever fan casted Christopher Walken because like he's such a legend, but like he's not somebody I immediately think of when like oh we need an actor where he could fit uh, or a role where he could fit as an actor. Um, and it's going to be there is like a a little and it's not his fault. It's just like because he has been parodied so long like every time you hear that voice you're like oh that's Christopher Walken right there um, even like in the because I think most notably the last thing he was really in was Jungle Book right yeah Be- yeah he was me. killing it too and even but even with that voice it's like oh it's Christopher Walken so like but I, I think obviously he's more than just like with that cadence and voice and he's been a terrific uh, actor he won an Oscar right Deer Hunter did he yeah, yeah. I guess so and he's worked with great directors throughout his career. I mean, one of my favorite performances from him is... Damn, uh, he's been around forever. <laughs> Catch Me If You Can. That's so funny. That was 2000 and early 2000s. And like he was 2002. Still, yeah, and he was still playing like a dad character. And he's still like yeah. aged like, Actually, I love well. him in that movie. Yeah. It's a very good dad. He's really good. He a um, lot of good dad qualities. So like... What, Wedding Crashers? Yeah, Wedding Crashers. He is the dad in Wedding Crashers. Yeah. Claire. I've never seen that. Claire, honey. My man's been playing dads for like great movie. Two, 20 years. 30 years maybe yeah um so now he's just gonna be a psycho dad emperor daddy yeah emperor psycho but he definitely is a presence and he has that screen presence his look his voice well i know villeneuve's just gonna hook him up because villeneuve gets great performances out of his actors uh scars guard was so good as the baron so i know those close-ups are going to be hitting uh like i said he's so good at playing paranoid characters he can be the straight man obviously but he can also just be unhinged so I think that he's going to really lend his talents to this character. And uh, Nash made a point, you know, if part two really comes together and if it's a movie that's 
on par with the first one because for the first one, a lot of people liked it. It worked out well. Uh, yeah, you could solidify yourself as one of the best one-two punches in sci-fi history. Uh, obviously, it's not a trilogy, but maybe some years down the road, we will get Dune Part 3 because Denis has talked about that. But the cast is shaped. I mean, the, the cast for the first movie was great, so now it's really starting to shake yeah. out here into something that could potentially be better. Mm-hmm. I know I'm being selfish. Uh, sorry to cut you off. It looked like you were going to say something. You can go. Sorry. Um, sorry to be selfish, too, but we need more Batista as well. Will that be featured? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He'll okay. have a bigger role in this. Okay. I, I mean, it, it can't get any better at this point. So with the Baron sent him off here. in the end to basically rule over Dune now that the Harkonnens have taken it back. So he rules it with, you know, kindness, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> community. Wow. Um, fairness. Democracy. Yeah, civil yeah, rights. Wow. He brings democracy to Dune. Mm-hmm. Wow. He embraces the culture and the people, and it's all about culture. I always said that. Yeah, it's really. Does that round it out? Uh, you, you'll know more than us. Like as far as bigger, big roles in part two, new roles. I think that they're going to go f- for an unknown actress when it comes to Paul's sister. I don't think that they've cast anybody. Uh, that's a weird character as well. So the baby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> the, this this movie's going to be a bit freakier. Mm. Yeah. It'd be some weird things, some some cool things to try and wrap your mind around. But I think that really, yeah, that kind of does it for Jeff. the main characters. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Pete Harkonnen. Pete Harkonnen. I'm still hung up on the worms. More Do they color. talk at all? No. There's no, like, one worm that, like, goes... Like, well, oh. well, if you want to go beyond some of the books, <laughs> you get to book number three, four, and I haven't read those other books. So there are some ideas there that... Oh, Jeff Goldblum would be great as a worm. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think he'd be. I think good. that would be a good worm, right? Worm rider, worm tamer. I feel like he'd be okay. one with the worm. I can see the worm <laughs> voice as well. <laughs> Imagine but. they got Goldblum for the emperor. <laughs> uh, That'd be nice casting, though. No? <laughs> you know what? It, like, no matter who it was, if it was Goldblum, it would be like you know Phil New Man. He knows something that oh, we yeah, don't. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Goldblum is also an actor where he's been memed to death, but you, he's good. Mm-hmm. Obviously, movies like Thor Ragnarok, where you just let him just be who he is, you know, just mm-hmm. let him go full Goldblum. But yeah, with Villeneuve, uh, I think it's a it's not out of left field. But like Aaron said, it's not wouldn't have been my first choice, second, third, fourth, or fifth. But I'm satisfied with it. And sometimes yeah. those are the best choices. Well, I always like that, even with like uh, Riddler, Riddler, um, Riddler, R- R- three syllables. You're gonna bite your tongue off one of these days. <laughs> um, like it's gonna get caught in the back of your throat. <laughs> When, like, going into, like, oh, who, 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 before that announcement, like, in my mind, who would I want to see play that character? I would never would have said Paul Dano, but, like, when he was casted, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, that was a perfect one. That's good. You know who was the big one for a long time? Uh, Johnny Depp as Riddler after The Dark Knight came out? That was the big rumor, like, in comic book shops and on the internet. Really? Uh, yeah, we heard Johnny. Leo. <laughs> yeah, Leo was another one, yeah. Leo was also rumored. Yeah, that wouldn't have aged well. <laughs> Ooh, that would have been pretty bad. What a fucking... That is one freaky trial. Yeah. I'm using the word freaky a lot, but it's got different meanings. <laughs> it's all about context. Yes. All right, let's just move on to the next story. Talk about freaky. She-Hulk trailer. Oh, boy. <laughs> this one came and really left its mark on the internet. I had a lot of people talking, had a lot of people discussing. Uh, you know, right off the bat, the CGI does look god-awful. Oh, my God. And I think this is a reoccurring problem with these MCU productions, is that they're rushed, that they're on a timeline, that you have to get things done by a certain date, so people keep arguing, wait until the release date, they're not done working on the CGI, but that night might not be the best approach either. When you're working these people up into a deadline, first of all, they're not being compensated fairly. I th- put that out there right away, because none of these animators ever are. But that, to me, it, it just it's so lazy and uninspired. Where, like I said, you just want to get it out there. But when you're working up until this deadline, I, I can't imagine it's going to be that much better in three months. No. So, and that's a, that's, you can't ignore that. You know, that CGI is not appropriate for this show or the MCU. Well, we talked about it with um, Avatar. Like, the technology is, I don't want to say the same, but like, you, you, the, that showed that, like, even back then, if you had time and resources, you can make it look fucking good. And that looks better than this. And this is, what, you know, almost 15 years into the future, and it's <laughs> backed by Marvel, and it doesn't even hold a hold a candle to what Avatar was when it came out. So, like, time and money, like, obviously p- 
play an important role. And when you do take your time, it's going to look better. I think the CGI has like steadily, especially with the Disney series, uh, the Disney Plus series has just been on a slope downwards. I thought Moon Knight wasn't that great. Um, yeah. I think Loki looked pretty good, and the other ones looked pretty good, but these last two have been pretty uh, underwhelming in that sense. And it's just like... Obviously, when these shows were first coming out and they were having this lineup in Phase 4 and have all these different series, you know, we were getting excited because it's like, you know, with this and Lord of the Rings and House of the Dragon, like, like these channels are starting to put massive amounts of money into TV series and we're going to get cinema quality on TV and that's just not what we're getting. Well, it's just... And with Star Wars, too. Um, although I think Star Wars has been... looks a little better. Yeah, but from behind the scenes when they're approaching the Boba Fett show and it doesn't look like the Mandalorian show, that tells me you just don't care as much. You don't expect as many people to watch this anyway. So you're not even giving the show a chance to maybe bring in some of the naysayers and the doubters. Why are you doing a Boba Fett show? Well, if it comes out and it looks as good as Mandalorian and the writing's just as strong, maybe Boba Fett is a more favorable character. Yeah. Because I don't think he's that fan favorite anymore. He's kind of like this divisive figure in Star Wars, where it's, where do you stand on Boba Fett? And I can tell you where you stand on all the rest of it at this point. So, But when it comes to these Marvel shows, like you said, Moon Knight, the CGI wasn't great. This CGI is awful. They need to slow down because they're really getting to a territory where people are going to become tired of these stories. And I can feel it setting in for myself. I, I don't know. What was your reaction to this trailer, Nash? Well, Someone who's oh my not God. as tapped into the MCU. Well, the first initial thing that I saw was somebody like complaining about it was saying that Marvel has all these shows coming out. And the comparison is basically like your boss just puts a whole shitload of work on your on your desk and says, completely overwhelming, get all of this done by a certain time. Your first reaction is to pri- prioritize and make... You know, to touch on your point, Bo, they seem like this is the least important of, I guess, the bunch. People aren't going to watch this. You know, so as, you know, a worker that's overwhelmed, you're going to take the top dogs and you're going to work on them. And then that you just bang out. Watching this trailer, I just right away, I was just like, this This is like a comedy that's not supposed to be funny. You know, this is the CGI is terrible. Uh, her swiping on Tinder as a looking like Princess Viona, looking like Grintilda from Banjo and Gazooie. Well, the people thirsting over her are so funny. Oh, yeah. I'm all well, for that. Stomp on me. Yeah. That, that was my second point. <laughs> yeah, at one point, it's, yeah, the CGI is terrible, but I know what you're going for, and I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the direction. I like the vision, but it, it's not so crystal clear at this I, moment. I mean, it obviously looks fake. She's, it looks like a fan edit. Obviously like, it's a different show yeah. that somebody put a filter over. Obviously, she's like the Hulk and big, and like, you know, no one is that tall or that muscular for, uh, to play She-Hulk, but you can. I feel like there is an avenue you where you can. Yeah, just be get practical. a bigger woman, and yeah, make her green. The approach should have been practical. Yeah, that sometimes it's better if you just get a person and give them those powers because it's still going to look cool. If she's green and she's got muscles and she's able to punch down a building, I'm going to be like, yeah, I buy it to this. She, they're telling me she's a superhero. I don't need her to look like the <laughs> the choices they make sometimes boggle my mind. The things they will do and won't do. You know, we're not going to make Miss Marvel stretchy, but we have to make her a big hulking green woman. <laughs> I, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, and and it's so funny that like at the end of the trailer it says She Hulk attorney at at law. Well, it's really it's kind like, of <laughs> well. I mean, I like that they're going for like a more like it's going to be a comedy show. And that's something different. I mean, obviously, we've had comedy and movies that are very reliant on their comedic aspects in the MCU in the past. But this is, like, I think the first, like, genre-based, like, this is a comedy. Right, yeah. Which I think is actually pretty cool because it's something different. But, like, are we going to get, like, actually funny people, like, creative writer's room and, like, make it an actual sitcom-esque humor? Or is it just going to be, like... um, just our classical Marvel Marvel humor, but just the whole show. Let me save you time. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly... I mean, this, like I said, it is a comedy that's just not funny. It, it Or whatever it's supposed to fucking be. I, I mean... Right, and this story, a, a young woman living on her own, she's also a superhero, she's also an attorney. This is a story I would want to be told uh, in a mature way rather than it be f- having to fit into the MCU and PG-13. You know, I want to see her out there living her life and getting into romantic entanglements and partying hard. And you just want to see She-Hulk fuck. You could say I it. Wanna see She-Hulk f- <laughs> I want to see She-Hulk fuck. And the MCU is so afraid of sex. 
But that's that's not the type of show we're going to get. Like it's going to be you know teetering on the line of more mature themes and ideas. A show more for millennials, for people mm-hmm. in their 20s or 30s. But I don't think they're going to fulfill that. I don't think they're going to fulfill what they've shown us in this trailer that you know you you keep the best jokes for the movie or when the actual show is out and you give the shitty jokes in the trailer that it's going to get better. <laughs> Speaking of I don't of, believe that. I mean another joke that's been and I hate that it has to be She-Hulk and Miss Marvel that looks so bad. But go ahead, Nash. No, it's just the one joke that's going around about her picking up the guy. Um, you know, I, I kind of like it better when Phoenix Marie and Jordi El Nino did that better. But um, I'll let you guys watch that, <laughs> watch that version. But I, I, I don't know. I, I. You need to do a video essay. The influences of She-Hulk. <laughs> See, I was looking. I was gonna make like a a, sc- a split a screen. Okay. Oh no, a split screen on Twitter. <laughs> And you can't find any with clothes on, so I was like, I can't do it. But yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> you gotta get creative I, with those uh, censorships. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know. But anyway, I'll let I'll let the the fans watch that one. Um. <laughs> Ooh, the unsuspecting listener. It's gonna be in for a treat. <laughs> oh, I wonder what he's talking about. <laughs> no, the best was that post about Jordi El Nino that kept going around about he was. Um, you know, he's like homeless, but he managed to <laughs> yeah. get a scholarship to like every Ivy League school. Yeah. Like retweet to support this instead of always retweeting bad news. Mm-hmm. And like you'd see like your aunt retweet it or repost it on Facebook, you know. It's like, oh. One of my it's... older cousins who's like in their 60s shared it. I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I know who that is. <laughs> oh, boy. You don't. <laughs> well, he made a, a great career for yeah, himself. Let's yeah. just say that. In different well, avenues. I always do like when... um. People comment on politicians. It'll be like a picture of John Cena, like in an army uniform. It's like, hey, this is my <laughs> uncle who just got back from Iraq. And they'll retweet, like, just, he was a big fan. And they'll retweet. They did that with Johnny Sins. <laughs> Remember that that one politician was just like, oh, my God, welcome home and all this stuff. <laughs> Johnny Sins. Oh, I mean, God. it's, yeah. Um, you got to be careful on the internet. Yes. Yeah. But that but, was the, that was the bit, the one big thing going around about She-Hulk. That I saw like uh, all the videos of like these girls just picking up tiny men and stuff and it's like You know what I think I've like <laughs> my stance on Marvel like I still like I'm super excited every time a new thing comes out and I have a lot of fun but like sometimes it just gets too and it's like from both ends of it where it just gets so annoying at times. Like I'm not going to name any names but like you have the people who just go like fucking cr- Call them out. Name a name. Call crazy for like the, the littlest things that come out and like just starts going crazy for characters. Just and bothered. Probably don't even know. Um, and then you have people who like to shit on every little aspect of it, and no, nothing's names. ever good enough. So it's like, at one point, like I think we've lost where it's just like I like to see these movies because I love the lore and I just want to have fun. And then it just got, uh, and it's just because it, I think it's just so popular now and is in every corner of cinema and television and it's all everybody talk about it just created this thing that there's no escaping it's also way less toxic than star wars is i wonder if we will get to that point though i think it's because obviously they've had so much more hits than misses over the last 10 years where star wars is not even close to that sort of ratio but i wonder if these shows start piling up or you're going to see it's not going to be so much too extremist factions Mm -hmm. it's just going to be one extremist faction that hates it but it's it's got to the point where people are like going crazy or like uh hyping up like people they don't even know or like it's clear like they don't read the comics and they're like and they're just like picking up on the hype just to like and you have the other section who same thing doesn't know the character not even about she hulk but most of these characters or the fringe characters that um people uh, that aren't too popular and they just bullshit on that for that aspect of it it's just a weird place and i just don't know Welcome why to the internet my i know <laughs> it, it's been First like this time, for a huh? while but it's like i feel like it's just dawned on me where i'm just so tired of like uh, just the unnecessary hype or hatred surrounding these projects it's just like well let's just watch it and have fun with it but uh that's never going to be the case again and I think, like, even the picking on the CGI, it, it got me, like, even with the Spider-Man, when they had they would pick those, like, little screenshots and be like, oh, my God, this is supposed to be Marvel. It's like, dude, you didn't know, you didn't even realize that until somebody else probably pointed it out to you, or you had to fucking stop and pause while you were watching it on DVD, uh, Blu-ray. If it's, that's not where your energy should be. 
Obviously, yeah. with the She Hulk, it's a lot they more in your face. They are spending way too much more money these days on A list actors rather than making the well, best You've movie. made that point a million times, and I agree with it. So it's like. Oh, thank you. I think there's obviously room for criticism and room for, like, now you're just being a dick. Oh, and, yeah. And there's room for light loving it, but there's also, like, all, uh, times where you're like, all right, you're, you're a little too much on this. Relax. Right. And I think that's a good way to transition to our next story. With a show like The Boys, because it's not as popular, a trailer like this comes out and everyone just loves it. And people are just excited to see where this story is headed because it left off on some loose threads, uh, you know, leaving characters in different areas and, you know, how they're going to continue their fight against the superheroes and how is Homelander going to continue, you know, spiraling out of control. (laughs) So this is actually a trailer that I cut off halfway through because I was like, wait a minute, I don't need to watch this. Because we're not going to talk about it ever. And then I realized, oh, it's going to be a story on the podcast. So I only watched half of the trailer because I, <laughs> I want to be surprised. I'm going to stop watching as many trailers as I can for things that I know we're really not going to touch on. But like, I, I'm more so just reviewing it, reacting to it based on my hype for season three. Because like I said, the ending of season two was so good. And I think there's a real debate there to say, uh, you know, which season was better. For what I saw from this trailer, especially the scenes with Anthony Starr's Homelander, who, you know, not sure if he's acting anymore, but he is so good as this character. Just with the boys, because I'm not a, a, you know, I don't watch the boys, but this trailer, I, just to compare the trailers, uh, you already know what's going to happen with She-Hulk. You know, She-Hulk basically gives you the whole storyline in the trailer. With the boys, it kind of looks open-ended and, you know, all different characters' perspectives look like that. You know, I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? You know, because yeah, I know I think a little this trailer bit of it. definitely did do a good job of that. Yeah. Where, you know, they're throwing so much at you. So maybe I should have watched the full thing. Yeah. But yeah, there are so many characters now, so many good characters in this show. And, uh, you know, they've got different motivations. And they're complex characters. A guy like A Train, what the hell is he going to be up to in this season? You know, he's had such a bad go of it these last two years. Is he finally going to help out the so called good guys? Is he, is he still going to be on the fence? Oh, yeah, he did join a cult, right? <laughs> Oh, shit, I forgot about it. Well, that guy got his fucking bla- uh, brain yeah, blown out, right? By, you uh, need to watch the boys. You'd like it. Yeah. Very similar to The one to thing Invincible. I wanted to say, too, is I, I love that the bodies explode like that. Yeah. Like, I, I that was the whole big thing about, like, superhero things with me was, like, if Superman could punch a guy and the guy will just go flying into the building and he's fine. But realistically, if that happened, he's exploding. <laughs> and, you know, it's, you know, I love that. So, yeah, I, I really do need to watch the boys. I've seen a couple episodes and I really enjoyed it. So... No, he's like, I think he's the best, I don't think he's like, obviously he's not the best actor working today, but I think he's the best actor playing a role, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Like, he's as good as Homelander, he's as good as playing Homelander as, as like, any other character playing, any other actor playing a character right now on television. Big Bang Theory is not on anymore, right? No, because then okay. Sheldon Cooper would be, <laughs> what's his name? He got close. Young Sheldon? Well, yeah, Young Sheldon, I mean. Gun to my head, can't name that actor's name. <laughs> No, but like... Or oh, the good doctor. Oh, Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons. There you go. But who's young Sheldon? Jimmy Parsons. But like, he... like, And that's so crazy to say, especially in the same show where, you're, where you have uh, Urban as fucking uh, Billy Butcher, who's he probably equally as good in that role, but Anthony Starr is just a fucking beast when he comes to that character. And the character is just so well written and so so many different layers that you really don't know what he's going to do next or how he's going to react to a certain situation because he's just completely unhinged. But I think they're definitely going to continue in, it looks like, from his uh, on, uh, for his character, like trying to rally, like... Uh, you know, that certain base, like, because the way they've kind of, uh, I guess you don't really know this, Nash, like, kind of they uh, portray these heroes is, like, very much, um, they market them to certain, like, demographics. Yeah, but aren't they, like, dickheads? Oh, yeah, superheroes are dickheads, but, like, they market it, like, in the season one, like, as a, him, they marked him as, like, an evangelical type savior and everything like that, really okay. rallying up certain, like, Christian communities, South, Southern and communities. And you see that in the trailer a little bit. Yeah, so, like, I feel like they're going to further expand on that, where, like, it's very, very, very much like politics, where you pick a base and you kind of just rally that base, and that's all your support system, and you're good. Okay. Lock yourself in that support system, and you're not going to hear anything bad, because you're surrounded by people who worship you. And I think, like... They've done a great job of exploring that, so I can't wait to see what they do with that uh, going into the season. And with Billy being able to get like superpowers for twenty four hours, that's fucking awesome. 
Yeah, and a character like Edgar being played by Giancarlo Esposito, he was great in the scenes in season two that he was in, especially when he was challenging Homelander. You had that anti-superhero uh, moment where he's telling him people became so obsessed with these characters, the movies, the shows, the merchandise. So I've always been saying, when are we going to start seeing the uptick in anti-superhero movies and shows where they're still celebrating what you can do in these worlds like nash says when superman punches a guy you want to see them explode that's also part of the anti-superhero genre right but it's also deconstructing the the common stories and the cliches that you see in in marvel and you see it in dc as well so i I think a show like the boys is so necessary for this time right now especially with the non-stop uh, movies shows coming from these other superhero uh companies but yeah, and it's like more than just the theme of like, what does it mean to be a hero? It's like, you know, the dangers of nationalism. <laughs> like it's just the uh, the way they incorporate yeah, yeah. these real world real world themes into a fucking superhero show that's completely unhinged is just pretty great. Well, they they do really do a good job of mirroring real life figures. Like season two had a character who's basically AOC, but she's just anti superhero. Ah, and she uh, just. Fuck- She's I hope that there's like an Elon Musk equivalent this season. You yeah. know, if they involve what would be next after superheroes, tech geniuses. You know, we worship the superheroes, but we also consider tech geniuses gods. So maybe like they can make I, I don't know if this maybe exists already in the original comics, like a Lex Luthor type yeah. character, because that's why I still am a bit favorable towards Eisenberg and Batman v Superman, because I think he represents that archetype so well. And it does mirror uh, the real life figures we have. Well, I think the best point, like the best part too, is like I think obviously with a lot of the subjects they tackled in the last season, like um, it's definitely centered toward it criticizes like multiple different groups, and I think they also do a good job of like everyone catches strays. So it's like liberals, fucking conservatives, tech billionaires, just like you all fucking suck. Anybody can get it. Yeah, and mm. that's good because everyone does suck. It show. It, it, the more you guys talk about it, the more I want to watch. You'd really like it. Yeah. The first scene is great. It's going to hook you right away. All right. Talk Amazon? about blowing up. <laughs> yeah. Amazon. I can do it. All right. Good trailer. The boys were excited for that. That is dropping June 3rd, and we will be reviewing that first episode. So be on the lookout for that. Jeez. Let's move on to U.S. weekend box office. So this was the big uh, story last week, the success of Doctor Strange making over $180 million at the U.S. domestic weekend box office. But this week, it dropped off 67%. It made $61 million. It's got a domestic total of 292 I'm not sure about the international total. Uh, number two was The Bad Guys at $7 million. Number three was Sonic, once again, at uh, $4.6 million. Firestarter, the reboot of the original Firestarter, made $3.8 million. And Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, once again appearing in the top five with $3.3 million to domestic total of 47 million so hope everyone goes out there and watches everything everywhere all at once got the chance to see it again it's still a masterpiece look at that didn't expect it not to be (laughs) it's the same movie but yeah the big story dr strange dropping off i was wondering maybe if the shorter runtime would give it some more rewatchability but i think aaron was right people didn't go back for those second watches and uh good job thanks um a big thing for me is like I wanted to go back and see it but like everything's on the internet already <laughs> so it's like the scenes I would want to go back to see and experience again in the theater I just don't have to so <laughs> <laughs> have to everything fucking yeah. murdered <laughs> you know what it is like after two weeks everything like at least some people are conservative you'll have the occasional douchebags that ruin everything but after like two weeks it, like people it's just a free for all like they don't care like about your busy life if you're not oh, yeah, able to yeah. get into the movie theater. Yeah. All that shit's there. See, this so is like, like like you said, it's all right there. You don't have to see it again if you know. I think after a certain week when you cry when you cry online, it's like, whoa, spoilers. It's like if you really cared, you would have seen it by now. Right. There's a certain time. I think there is a certain time. Right, but I mean people hey, people like let's say, for example, got babies and can't get to the movie theater or you know, and take some you know, there's certain times in life you just can't get to the movie theater. So don't go you know. I would say yes, Don't go on stay Twitter. off Twitter, right. but I mean, that's, if that's, it's really, that's an addiction. If it's really eating you, or you can you could block out the keywords. Yeah, you could do that. That's So that's, Doctor Strange worldwide is at 715. Ooh. I mean, that's still a fucking shitload. 
And that's another thing too. And more. imagine how much more profit you could have made if you didn't have to pay Charlize Theron five million <laughs> for appearing in that janky ass costume at the end. Yeah, that is really starting to piss me off. <laughs> Give people opportunities, new actors. Yes. I love how when I get pissed off, it's just funny. And the fingers up, too. <laughs> yeah. The fingers I'm, I'm up. wagging at yeah, people today. Wagon. I'm wagging at Mickey. Well, let's like give opportunity. Chris Hemsworth wasn't a big star when they got him for Thor. Yeah. Well, now it's just now he's one of the biggest stars in the world. Now they have the resources, so they're just but it's basically so, playing. But you want to make more money? You know, get Jimmy from off the street. They don't need to make more money. They're already making a shit ton. I'll do it. How much have they made already? This is it going to be almost a billion dollar movie? It's going to hit them really fast when people stop going, man. Transformers have the same attitude. When's we it going to happen? Out... It hasn't happened yet. It could. I guess it could. But then, like... A Black Widow? Yeah, you have circumstances, Middle sure. Middle pandemic. Like, hard of worked pandemic. Out, worked out for James, James Bond. James Bond worked had- out for Fast Ten, Fast Nine. Well, that's family. Oh, that's that's exactly. garbage. Yeah, more people are going to be drawn to family <laughs> if the MCU. I th- that's another thing when people complain about that. Like, obviously, there's a bigger picture criticism, but it's like, well, what do you expect? The, when that's when people, those are the shows and movies people are seeking out. Don't blame this. Uh, you can blame the studios and theaters, but I mean, blame the person next to you. And blame yourself. No, that that is the wrong attitude uh, to but have. Th- what? They're in the positions of power. But the mar- yeah, but the market dictates that power. But people are stupid. I know. So right. blame people. Very. We need to look out for we stupid need, people. We need to blame people for their stupidity more often. We are the stupid people party. <laughs> blame. Stop being There's stupid. There's enough blaming stupid. of the stupid people. The stupid people get enough blame. <laughs> it's easy to point the figure to the big corporations, and trust me, they're not. Yeah. Because yeah. they're the ones responsible. But trust me, like, yeah. Fuck them. And they're Fuck right for the criticism. Fuck the But then when you're going to the movie theater of an empty bowl, like, please, fuck, give me more. Like, they are not giving you more. And this is an endless cycle. It won't be an endless cycle because it wasn't for Transformers. They may have more staying you're, power here. I mean, that's a... Uh, Do you realize how much money those movies made? But it's a different animal at this point. No, it's certainly a different animal because obviously the movies in the MCU are better. But if they start reaching territories where they're reminiscent of more Transformer block type blockbusters, other blockbusters that are coming out and thinking they can coast on a name brand, and then they just absolutely—it's not—it wouldn't be the first time. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean was the same thing. That those movies you drop one, you made a billion. Mm-hmm. Then they came out hard. Obviously, they're going to stick cool around for a bit yeah. more here because well, they haven't dipped too heavily into that territory. Well, best Transformers movie made the least amount of money on Bumblebee. But, yo, it's really, you can say Eternals and Shang-Chi, they didn't do as well. Right. But also, no Chinese market and still pandemic. The Chinese aren't going to always be there to save you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Adam Silver that. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, they always will be. Yeah, well, they they get grumpy and then they come back. Yeah, they like their rockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm> rocket man, <laughs> that boy, um, yeah. All right, okay. well, let's move on to the next story. That was a fun conversation. I just have a, a, a suggestion for the box office. To, uh, you know, yeah, how, how are you, you suggesting to us? I or just hate everything. Yeah, okay. every, every no, no, no. Here, you everything a, everywhere, all at once. Every yeah. It's just that movie may leave you a bit more optimistic about the world. That's why I hate Twitter because it's just like I just hate everything. You know Sports what you're getting into, though. What? It's a swamp, and you're you're head diving right into it. You know what you're doing. I'm trying to not go on, on the Twitter, the, the swamp anymore. I'm Come in that. Well. I'm fucking. <laughs> want to stay dry? Just, just I'm putting I'm water in my mouth, people. spitting it out no. with my floaties on. I it's don't not, give a but fuck. But it's every, everybody. Everybody's starting to get. I just under. don't like things anymore. And it's starting to happen with Marvel, even though I do like Marvel, but I'm getting, I'm just more tired of conversation around it. Nash, what's your point <laughs> that we can make here before we get to the last Suggestion for the, uh, the box office rate, um, the uh, grossing or whatever, we need a l- nice little jingle when that comes in or a nice little song or like, because that's like a thing that happens I on this podcast. I get podcast. money. Yeah, yeah or can... something like that. Or what like, if it's you know, a bad week at the box office? Oh, you had a bad day. <laughs> you it on down. Then we get copyrighted for music. Then we'll make up our own song, uh, sad song. Yeah, we'll just have, we'll just sing it. We'll harmonize. Yeah, I, I think that would be a nice little darkness. jingle. Yeah, we could do that. We can work on it. I gotta hit up the jingle man. We have a jingle man. Yeah, it's just me. Oh, with uh, a <laughs> jingle. Man. That's one of your on. personalities, <laughs> the jingle man. I just turn around, spin around in my chair. I got sunglasses. Is he in one of Batman's rogues? Jingle man. Yeah. No, that's uh, actually the Flash or Hootie Bigum. 
<laughs> no, that's my rapper persona. Oh, my fault. All right, final story here. We got a new movie from Pixar. Look at that. They just keep pumping them out. Uh, this new one is called Elemental. It's about um, a city where the four elements live together in harmony, but they're alive. So It's a fire. Yeah. And it's about uh, a fire character and a water character. and <laughs> They probably don't get along. No, I think actually they, they do get along, but they oh. learn more about each other. Mm. So they, they broaden their horizons here. Oh, that's nice. This does sound like a parody of a Pixar movie, like a skit that SNL would do. Well, like if a, they had... Uh, oh, no. You know, somebody would voice these stupid characters. Keenan Thompson. Keenan Thompson, yeah. There was whoever, like a whoever's picture. Hosting. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> By the way, I'm tired of Pete Davidson. <laughs> that's a nice one, too, actually. He, uh, yeah, he, he seems like he hosts SNL a couple times now. <laughs> Pete Davidson's on like every YouTube ad, and I'm fucking tired of him. Well, join the club. <laughs> I the guy's living him. the ideal male life. I he just I does nothing and bangs hot women. Yeah, I didn't mind that. Go off, King. The hottest of women. But, like, every, every time I watch a YouTube video, it's him talking about his pearly whites. I'm just like, I'm over well, it. Now. Smart water. Mm-hmm. Get that yeah. money. Eh, yeah, get your money, actually. Um, get your bag, King. Someone tweeted, like, there was like a photo of like a sketch of this concept, and someone had the response, which I think was perfect. It's like, uh, like this, scene, this looks like their past two movies. <laughs> like, the, like, you could have told me this was from any of their past two movies, and I've been like, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't want to say they're because, and it's going to come out, and it's going to be really good. I don't think there's any doubt about that, because it's, I mean, what, what were the last Pixar projects? You had uh, Soul was very good. Um, Soul like, was. When's very the last good. time they like really missed? They, they don't a, miss. They had a dry stretch. Cars, the Cars movies. Dinosaur was also not that great. Oh, they, but people loved Cars. Like Cars One, Cars yeah. One, people loved that movie. So, you know, there was that uh, that kind of stretch there. What was that? Three Cars movies, Cars Two, Brave, Monsters University. Then they bounced back with Inside Out. University was the pretty good. good. Dinosaur was unforgettable. Cars okay. Three was shit. But like they're usually pretty good. Finding Dory. Um. So like, Incredibles Two, underwhelming. Really? I like Incredibles Two. So. We have Lightyear 2 coming out. You guys want to go to fan questions? I mean, this Pixar story, I think we've given it enough. Yeah. Did, uh, just real quick, any casting in it or no? Not yet. No cast. Okay. Yeah. I think it will be a cute movie. Great uh, you concept. know what? I did like Luca. Oh, okay. I was, uh, I was a Luca fan. With that, like, little sea monster yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like the setting. All right. Now, before we get to fan questions, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today's episode, and that would be Storyblocks. Right now, you can click the link in our description box below. And this is a good opportunity for anyone who's interested in content creation, whether you're making videos on YouTube or if you're making videos for your small business. Storyblocks is dedicated to making it easier for independent creators to bring their stories to life without sacrificing the quality of your video due to time, budget, budget or resources. This is what makes Storyblocks so great. With one of their affordable subscriptions, you will receive unlimited downloads for all of the content in the Storyblocks library. They have stuff like templates for softwares like After Effects, or things that you can use in all the major Adobe products, stock images, graphic designs, background footage. They also have royalty-free music, so you can give your video some cinematic flair, or if you want something to serve as background music while you're narrating. The options in their library feel like like they're unlimited. They have a very easy search bar that you can just type in specifically what you're looking for and they give you dozens and dozens of options. And the Storyblocks library is royalty free, so all of the things that you download when you're a member of Storyblocks are yours to use as many times as you like. So consider signing up to Storyblocks with one of their affordable subscriptions by clicking the link in our description box below. Alright, now let's move on to fan questions. Let's hear that music. That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and you're trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not just show, it's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. All right, this question here from Allison Sidgers. Oh, fan question, what's up? How or do you expect to see Hayden Christensen's acting through the suit? I definitely think there are going to be moments where we see Hayden Christensen fucked up Mm -hmm. and they're going to give him those moments. We've seen Darth Vader at times with the mask off, obviously, at the end of Return of the Jedi and briefly in Empire from the back of the head. Wasn't looking great. So I I think they're going to give him those opportunities. I don't I I think the voice is it's going to be James Earl Jones. He's still alive. They still got him. 
What happens, like, God forbid, but it's life. What happens if he passes? They'll, they, they definitely have technology to do that voice. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. And they've, dude, you, <laughs> they might be responsible for when he passes because they probably have him in a studio every weekend just recording every th- possible uh, yeah. thing yeah. anyone could ever say. Dude, the Stanley, we didn't talk about that. You see with the Stanley? Yeah, it's very evil. Mm-hmm. Very, uh, I, I don't even know what to say about that. It's so a weird. state signed but off it's, on it. Everyone's pointing the finger at Disney, but you all, Stanley's estate has been ran by money-hungry yeah. people for decades now. And they, for a long time, there was reports about the way that they abused him near the end because he wasn't all there. And that they were able to get away with some shady things. But yeah, that that is just disgusting. Is it okay to boo Stanley when he pops up? I know, but that's, yeah, it's... It was cool at the time. It was great to honor him when he was here. Yeah. That's fine. But, yeah, it's just, once again, Disney's stretching out a good thing and making it terrible. But Kinda Hayden like- Christensen, I think he's got a <laughs> shot here. I think that this is the redemption tour for him. I love him in Revenge of the Sith, but I think he's got an opportunity here to leave a very good taste in a lot of people's mouths, and that's a good drop. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Um... Hmm. What was I going to say? I hope we get to see him outside the mask a little bit and kind of showcase, you know, I don't, obviously I don't think he's like the best actor, but obviously he wasn't given the best, the best chance to really show how, you know, his full capabilities in those movies. Um, but yeah, here's a good chance to, you know, you're playing fucking Darth Vader. That's awesome. And his reaction and everything that's come out around uh, this and, you know, how he's like, here's the support from fans and fans of the prequels and how like he never really thought that was going to happen and just like newfound appreciation for those movies and his portrayal like for him like i feel like i'm really good for him like, i feel like he just like deserves that especially when we've seen how not only him but other people from those those movies were treated uh, uh all these years so it's good for him to get some kind of recognition and for him to like be like oh you know uh, fans actually like me and they're excited about this and yeah he seems like a cool dude yeah so i'm happy for him uh this question here from ari grapes or strawberries strawberries what mood am i in uh green grapes are the best fruit so i'm gonna take grapes green grapes are good they're amazing yeah. you can freeze have you but ever had the cotton candy ones i hear you freeze them right yeah you pop them mm. oh cotton candy grapes are un believable frozen <laughs> i mean literally the best snack you You're can ever have it to me oh it's so good but strawberries for me you can eat them individually you could throw them in a shake you could throw them in uh different dishes dessert dishes Ooh. you know stra- grapes they're grapes yeah but you can put them in a salad you could put them see the thing also is with the strawberry too it's a good when point. i buy grapes or strawberries or berries it's always a good idea when i buy them i'll maybe have it like that night after i go to the grocery store but then I won't have them. I won't touch them again. Then they're they're bad. Yeah, well, they strawberries sh- fall apart very quickly. Yeah, they get the white fuzz around them. Yeah, we but get you bad need to strawberries wash them. though because we you know we're not in the place where they're growing strawberries. They right. grow grapes, lots of vineyards. But the green grape is great, and it, the cotton candy grape is, I mean, top five thing I've ever tasted in my life. Well, that's I was how- at the beach, nice hot day. I had a friend. She said, "Hey, I have frozen cotton candy grapes." Oh, nice. I said, "What is yeah. that?" Why don't you try and see for yourself? Ooh. Popped it in, nice and refreshing, oh, and man. it was just nice and sweet. Oh, 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 oh. that shit was good. How I, were the grapes? <laughs> amazing. They were very good. They well, were that's very, how. Um, do you want to go to the beach Saturday? It's supposed to be nice. I got it's a barbecue be 86 Saturday. and sunny. Who's your friend? Do you want to come? I wish. Do your friend want to come to the beach? <laughs> I wish. I'll tell you how fair it is. Oh. Oh, um, mama. Oh, it's mama. Meg the Stallion. <laughs> yeah. Who's that girl that's well, like, that's how, following her around? Did you see Fresh Kara. Oh, oh Telephine? Yeah. Just following She's her around. like no, Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, the, the kid Did from- you see that when she tried to kiss her and Meg the Sally was like- No, I didn't. Get off, please. It's almost like uh, the kid with Helga Pataki on the bus. Always behind her. <laughs> breathing? <laughs> yeah, breathing. That's what. It, that's exactly what it looked like. She used to punch that man in the fucking <laughs> face, right? <laughs> she used to deck him. Sock him. <laughs> sleep, uh, the sleep. sound effect is so vivid. Yeah. And yeah the and crunching of the glasses, the gla- right? Yeah. How, and glasses Only, are not cheap. Yeah, very expensive. Look at Pataki gave out more concrete naps than Batman. <laughs> <laughs> she was out there like fucking Robert Pattinson, man. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did she see Fresh? I didn't see Fresh yet. Ah. Uh, well, that's how uh, Sebastian Stan picks up Daisy Edgar Jones in a grocery store. And he's like, oh, 
Cotton Candy Grapes. <laughs> it's That's on Hulu now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I need to watch that. I want to watch that, too. I watched uh, Deep Water, the Anna Darmus, Ben Affleck erotic thriller. Mm-hmm. Bad. Bad, bad, I can imagine. bad. But she was fantastic. <laughs> Ooh. All right, this question here from V.V. Kenny. V. What fast food movie promotion comes to the top of your head? Uh, every the is Denny's considered fast food because their movie promotions are they do one for everything, and it's awesome. It's uh that's a Denny's in Breaking Bad, right? That he goes to eat to, mm-hmm. eat at it. Yeah, the biggest one for me is always McDonald's in two movies, Chunking Express and Yee. No, no, no. I think he means like come to Denny's for their new solo pancake stacker. It's like food items. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Like, They'll have like a, a a dinosaur attacking McDonald's and say, "Oh, what? Well, well, why don't you try this monster-sized burger that we DQ have?" DQ to- does it a lot. They'll have the Jurassic World Blizzard. Yes. For yeah. Movie promotions. Right. Uh, well, I, it's not for movies, but uh, the Pokemon deals that they always did at McDonald's. Oh, with the gold. Things. Yeah, the golden cards, Amazing. the balls. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, I love those. They used I to, used to do, love collecting them. They used to have it a lot more often. Uh, you don't really see it too much anymore. Denny's okay. is a big one. Um, this is different, but McDonald's, every t- when they dropped the Travis Scott meal, it was probably my favorite moment on it. They had, like, the most random meal. <laughs> and they didn't even have, like, the actual... The memes were great. Then Megan the Stallion did Popeye's. Yeah, the Popeye's meals. Um, I think they had a Bad Bunny, right? That Bad Bunny McDonald's? Yeah. They had somebody... Didn't they have, um, Nelly? <laughs> <laughs> then they have, but weren't they like calling them by their actual name? Like they weren't saying like, "Oh, the Nelly meal." They were like saying his actual birth name, and they were calling it that meal. And then he's like, "Yo, who the hell is that?" And then it's Nelly. Uh, no. I, I don't know, but yeah, I don't know. The only thing that sticks out to me it, it <laughs> has nothing to do with the. I don't know why. I feel like. I think, I don't know, Jack Harlow, Long John Silver's meal. That makes sense. <laughs> that totally makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why, yes. but Didn't he do like a or Kentucky Cheese fried Lee's. chicken? <laughs> He's from Kentucky. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. The only thing that really sticks out to me, and I know it kind of doesn't correlate, but it kind of does, is Brian Cox just doing the ba da ba ba He kills that Yeah, show, he yeah. kills it. Remember the Shack fries at Burger King? They used to have shake up fries, yeah, too. Yeah. I remember the shake up fries, but what's the Shack fries? I think they're the Shack Pack. It was like a Shack meal. Oh. Was it big? Didn't Batman have one? For Papa John's or Calzone? There was like a Batman pizza putt thing. Yeah, there was a Batman pizza. Yeah. yeah. I think it was Blaze Pizza. No, I don't think it was Blaze. I think it was one of the, a delivery place. Papa John's? I don't think the Bat fucks with Papa like that. He might have. I mean, the Papa used to be cool. I, I remember thinking I was going to get it just for like a bit, but I never did. That would have been hilarious. Yeah, Batman Pizza Calzone. Yeah. At uh, Papa John's. Papa, Papa John's. Little Caesars. Little oh. Caesars. Pizza, pizza. 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 Oh. You owe me a pizza. Jinx, owe me a pizza. No. Why? Come on. <laughs> a Papa John's pizza? That's disrespectful. <laughs> Might as well just a spit little, in my little mouth. Caesars pizza? Just spit in my mouth if you're going to give me Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple more questions. This one here from DK Rebs. What was your favorite movie growing up? Hmm, favorite movie growing up. Growing up. <sighs> I, mean, I had a bunch of them that yeah. I was obsessed with. Beetlejuice. Love Beetlejuice. Loved. Whoa. <laughs> Almost slipped there. Uh, Ice Dogs with Cuba Gooden Jr. <laughs> oh. Used to love that movie. Thought it was very inspirational. Sandlot was one of them. I used to watch Sandlot all the fucking time. Um, Lion King was a big Lion King kid. Um, I used to love Lilo and Stitch too. Mm. That was a good one. That was a good one. Aloha, aloha. Max Keeble's big move. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> that and Snow Day. Remember Snow Day with Josh Snow Peck? Day. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the fucking movies, man. That Snow Day was a good one. Liar, liar. Josh Peck ran yeah, the I game. I used to watch Liar, 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 and Major League. Me and my brother used to watch all the time. The Patriot. Mm. The Patriot. That's a big dad movie. Yeah. A lot of dads standing in their living rooms with their hands on their hips watching that. I would just steal the DVDs and uh, VC- VHSs and watch. <laughs> the ultimate. That's how I almost steal DVDs. I'm like, wait, no, that's way too much in the future for me. VHSs we used to take. Wow. I would watch that all the time. You know how many dads have done a double feature of The Patriot and The Samurai? Too Those? many. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to ask Slick if he's ever done that. Oh, he's probably in the middle of it right now. <laughs> he's my probably boy, getting my ready boy for the... palms out videos and... Uh, uh, videos, uh, movies and shows all the time. Dude, the, I know a few older people like that, like in their 60s, 70s, where all they do is watch movies. Yeah. Like, my mom's boyfriend watches everything. Yeah. My stepdad, like, you need to start a podcast. Still yeah. watches VHSs. He has a whole fucking collection. That's it's pretty funny. Pretty cool. You know what movie I used to watch all of? Napoleon Dynamite. I don't know if that's a little that's too like, old. Yeah, it's teenage years. But yeah, that that movie I used to watch all the time. Aristocats, I used to watch with my sister all the time. We had a whole Disney. I used to love Land Before Time. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Ice Age. Oh, huh? yes. Is that Dancing on the Borderline? Just, uh, being too that old? studio just closed. Shrek, I used to watch a lot too when it first came out. Oh, we're smoking that ice pack? Uh,. That Ice Age oh, pack? Oh, no. Don't. That's mean. I'm about to hit that. Did you see that what they same. released? They released the little squirrel finally getting the Finally, yeah. yeah. That made me almost choke up. That was such a, an annoying reoccurring bit. And then, oh, it's over. Wow. Ah, I kind of wanted to. Yeah. I want <laughs> to keep why. going. I, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore. I know why I thought of this because I connected Scroungy, like. Scroungy? What was his name? So I was going to say like he's like a dog who finally like he doesn't know what to do with it. That made me think of Chet Hanks. Did you guys see that video? Oh, like Chet Hanks doing his Joker impersonation. Yeah, yeah him on that a medicine ball or the, the actually, bouncy ball. Yeah, that interviewer fun. is. That's what she does, right? That wasn't real. What do you mean? She does like joke interviews. I have no she's, idea. She's like in on it because her reactions were very much like I'm in on this. I don't know. Last question. I can't remember who asked it, but who do you have in the uh, NBA Finals? Oh, you might want to get that person. Thinking uh, Alejandro. Alejandro, um, NBA Finals is going to be Warriors, uh, Heat, and then Warriors in, I'll say Warriors in six. That sounds about right. I'll go Warriors, Heat, same thing, uh, Warriors in seven. I just want to say real quick what Luka Donic is doing right now is unbelievable. He's so good. And carrying I'm not no disrespect to the Mavericks but what he's doing and carrying them to the Western Conference Finals that when roster is is abysmal thin yes mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's, they, all they do is just chuck up threes yeah. like but, please go in uh, yeah I think it's gonna be Heat Warriors um Jimmy Butler man what a playoff what a, Jimmy what a is, player yeah and now we were talking about this the other day like whatever we're rooting for the best narrative for LeBron uh the Heat making the finals like, okay, yeah, and that was a criticism. Oh, we played the fucking Heat. Well, Heat making the finals two, two out of four years. Hmm. Mm. Maybe they're mm. actually a good team. Maybe mm. it'd be a good team. And if they beat the fucking Warriors, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that narrative. Oh, it's oh, real man. juicy. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching a video the other day. It was uh, NBA media coverage before the bubble playoff started and after. It was so funny to see all these guys talking about oh, how LeBron and AD couldn't compete with Kawhi and Paul George. You, you that see they didn't it have enough a mile shooters. Away. They didn't have enough. The path was too hard. Two MVPs, second round, Houston, uh, the uh, Clippers, Western. <laughs> the bubble, it's, a hard, it's even harder because of the circumstances. This no, is the hardest championship a team could Steph win. I got into a huge debate yesterday. It's so funny you say that. And they said I was so stupid for saying that. That that is a harder championship to win in the bubble when you're away from your home. Dude, you're those away. games were so intense. Those guys were playing at like a hundred and ten percent because they were all well rested. They hadn't played in months. If LeBron would have delivered a bubble championship to New York, he would have had an army of psychopaths. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! <laughs> Where the bubble championship would have been c- cemented as the hardest, greatest championship ever, because it would have just been the New York media, the New York fan base. Imagine that. It's a. Am- he would have been. We would have built him a fucking monument. Yeah, yeah a bubble, bubble title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Legit. Yeah. He would never a giant bubble in the middle of uh, New York City. <laughs> He'd be Mickey a basketball statue god. in Times Square. He'd be one of the god. He'd be sent into heaven somehow. I don't even know how, but he'd be sent into heaven. And then whenever he had to come play basketball, he fucked up going to that fan base. And I know that there are Lakers fans out there that really respect him and like them. They're way more favorable to him on uh, Reddit. But the Reddit fans are usually the diehards, and the diehards can, you know, they can appreciate him for what he's done. But I'm shocked that Reddit fan base. I'm I'm shocked that Reddit is on his side. Usually Reddit is Reddit a bunch is of like the su- the Lakers subreddit is normally favorable LeBron. Reddit okay. gets a bad rap sometimes cuz like because uh, cer- of just certain subreddits, but like if you yes. if you find the right Reddit, it's like it's like the best place on earth. Oh, the next Helpful subreddit is such a good pleasant community. place. Yeah. People talking about like fun things. It's like I'm on 
most Reddit I'm on is uh, MLB The Show Reddit. And it's just a pleasant place. Yeah. People helping each other out. You should do this. Try going this. Giving some tips out. It's a good point. I'm like, thanks, guys. The only time... I, the Knicks subreddit is the most progressive place on the internet. <laughs> the amount of things that they say about the Knicks players <laughs> that makes me go... Okay. Banging on the Knicks bed tonight. Not far off how I feel about R.J. Barrett. <laughs> Love R.J. Barrett. Need that fourth year jump. I'll become so insufferable oh. on Twitter. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to the Nerd <laughs> Podcast for this week. We'll be d- back next week. Uh, almost choked up there. Uh, Nash, Aaron, thank you for thinking joining me. RJ. Yeah, yeah, choked up on R.J. That fourth year leap. I was thinking of that good, good. <laughs> 22, 6, and 5. Ooh. Oh. Need cool. that. All right, guys. We'll be back. Steal I got to clean my next Fuck week. It. I got to clean my boxers now. Steal my half. Damn. We were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.